Welcome to What is Truth? Brought to you by the Southern New Mexico Church of God in Las Cruces, New Mexico. What is Truth? is a weekly program which seeks to focus our attention on the truth of God's Word. Now, with this week's lesson, here's Pastor Meyer Spock. Welcome to the program. Today's program is going to talk about the Bible definition of sin. Most people just don't know, don't understand exactly what sin is. If you talk to two different people, you'll get two different meanings of sin. And uh, it's, a, it's a subject that's handled extensively in the Bible. There is a, a passage that explains us what the definition of sin is. And we're going to look at it today. But today, Mike, before we get started, my guest is David Tofsted. David, welcome to the program. Happy to have you. Hi, Meyer. Great to be on again. All right. Dave is a retired Army researcher. He spent 43 years studying the Bible. We're so happy to have you here, Dave. And I know you have some questions, and we're going to try to understand exactly what sin is. So that's our purpose today. What is the Bible definition of sin? And but let me ask you the question because you're okay. supposed to be leading this thing. Okay, so, that's Meyer. What is the Bible definition of sin? Good. I'm glad you asked that, Dave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's all turn to First John chapter three, and we're looking at verse four, and it says. First John three four. First says, John three four. Who whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Okay, so sin is the transgression of the law. We have two very, before we really get into it, we have two very important booklets we'd like to share with you today. The first booklet is, What Do You Mean Salvation? What could be more important than your salvation? What you're going to be doing for all eternity, can you tell me what would be more important than that? The second booklet is, Why Do You Keep Sunday? Most Christians keep Sunday, and they go to church on Sunday. They don't really use it as a Sabbath. They just... uh, worship on that day, they go to church on that day. How, how did that day come into existence? In this booklet, it explains that the Bible teaches the observance of the Sabbath. That's the seventh day. A lot of people think Sunday is the seventh day. Look on your calendar, you'll see it is the first day of the week. How did the Sabbath change from the seventh day to the first day. Please read this booklet. Call the number on the screen. We will send you these booklets for free. We have nothing to sell on our program. You could also order a DVD of this program that you could share with your friends, neighbors, relatives. We'd be happy to send you a DVD also for free. Now, let's get started with, Dave, we're going to get started with sin. Sin is the transgression of the law. You just read that. Right. When you break God's law, you are sinning. That's that simple. Well, but now, didn't Jesus say something different, or was Jesus saying basically the same thing? Well, is let's see. Is there another see, verse that talks about that? Let's see what Jesus said. Let's go to Matthew chapter 19, and we'll see what Jesus said about eternal life and sinning, and we'll understand it. Okay, chapter 19, the book of Matthew, we'll start in verse 16. 
Okay. Behold, one came. One person came. Doesn't say a Jew. Doesn't say a Gentile. It just says one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? You know, that was a terrific question, Dave. Yeah, that was, was a fabulous question. question. You know, that's, he really got to right, to the, right to the quick. Okay. And he said unto him, Why call you me good? There is none good but one that is God. But if you will enter into life, keep the commandments. Now, why right. do you suppose he... It gave that answer. Was it a was it a trick or was it the real deal? Was he trying to lead him on to something else? Well, let's because read then the guy early. said, "Which one?" You know. Yeah. It was like, okay. And he said unto him, "Which?" Now, why did he say which? Because there were two sets of commandments in those days. There were the commandments of God that Moses brought down from Mount Sinai, the Ten Commandments. Right. Then, Dave, there were also the commandments of men, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, all these groups of Jews put together thousands of commandments, and they were called the commandments of men. So there were the commandments of God, the commandments of men. Which set do I have to keep? Right. That's what this man wanted to know. Right, it looks All like right. he says what, which ones there are right there in 18. Go ahead, you read it. Thou shalt not do, do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Well, he, he quoted of, five of the Ten Commandments. And then he's added this other one, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So that wasn't one of the Ten Commandments. It wasn't, but, but the it last... But basically the covered sort of the... Yeah, the, the last six. All the bases, right? The last six commandments are your relationship to your fellow man. Right. That, so we covered that. Okay. So, Jesus, why did he say that? Why did he say, just believe in me? Because that, Dave, that was the starting point of your salvation, is obeying God, and is yet, obeying his commandments. You can't break his commandments and expect to salvation. It doesn't happen. And yet, for this young man, he seems to have said there's still something missing, because then, why would he have been there if he says, all these things I have kept from my youth, what lack I yet? What am I still missing? Well, Jesus so. wanted him to join up with his group. He wanted him to sell everything and come and follow me. And the young man walked away sorrowful. That's another case. And that's another but, problem. But, yeah, but right. the main thing is, the main question was, what one thing shall I do to have eternal life? And you've got to keep God's commandments. Right. If you break right. them, you are sinning. That's what we just pointed out. Well, now it sounds like, though, Paul was saying something different about the law. That, uh, you know, there's, there's law and there's grace, and, uh, and some people have taken that out of context, maybe. What did Paul say about the law? Okay, we're going to go now to Romans chapter 3. Okay. And we'll find out what Paul talked about. Here we are. Romans chapter 3, and we're looking at verse 9, I think. 9. Chapter 3, verse 9. What then? Are we better than they? He's talking about better than the, uh, the Jews. No, in no wise. For we have before proved, both Jews and Gentiles, that they are all under sin. Mm. So the whole world has sinned. The whole world has broken God's commandments. There's no 
not one that's righteous. No, not one. In fact, that's as what it is it written says over there in 23. Yeah, as it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. There is none that understands. There is none that seeks after God. And let's drop down to t verse 20. Verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. Right. So, Dave, here's the thing. How do you know you're sinning if you're not breaking any laws? You see? Right. You've got to, so you, you've got to have a law for you to be sinning, right? Right. You have right. to break a law. Let, let me give you an example, Dave. You're, you're going down uh, a street like Amador. Right. From, from Telshore on down to Valley Drive. And those lights are generally timed. They're supposed to be timed. Supposed not, to be. Not all of the time are they timed. A cop car is following you down as you're going down and you're making one light after another light after another light. They're all green. And you get to Solano and the light's red. The light's turning red. And you decide to go through the light. The policeman, he didn't stop you when you were going through green lights, did he? No. No, but when you, when you went through that red light, he pulled you over, he gave you a ticket, you, you, you have sinned, you have broken the laws. Not that I'd ever run a red light or anything. You know, yeah. not, not, not with my wife with me at least, let's put it that way, right? Yeah, okay. So you, you're, you're not under the law until right. you break the law. That's right. when you are under the law. We're going to see that as we go along. Romans chapter, let's look here at the Romans chapter 6, verse right. 22. Romans 6, verse 22, but now being made from sin, made free, free from, from sin, and become servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. You have everlasting life. Okay, yeah. for the wages of sin is death. Dave, this is what sin pays. The end of, the end of sin is death. If you, any person of... that hangs in there that wants to sin, sin is, is going to end up in death. Death is the absence of life. Okay. I notice that there's a difference. It's the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Okay. So you're, you're essentially, when you're sinning, you're buying eternal death. Right. Whereas when you're getting eternal life, it's God's gift to you. It's God's gift for free. Right. All you have to do is accept the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, be baptized... As, a, as an example of, as an example of uh, your conversion, you washed away the sin. You, you were under the water. You came up out of the water, which pictures death, you right. see? And now you're on your way to salvation. And you receive God's Holy Spirit. And that's the important thing. That's what gives you eternal life. You must have God's Holy Spirit. Well, Dave, we're going to take a short break. Uh, folks, please don't go away. We'll be right back.
Mark Goldstein, The Safe Money Guy, at 575-556-2472, to learn about innovative strategies now available to help you grow, protect, and preserve your money and financial future, regardless of market conditions. Horizon Granite is here. We'll come to you to customize your kitchen and bathroom with beautiful countertops and cabinets. Find out more at horizongranite.com. Call us at 575-650-3180. Horizon Granite is here. It's here. Make yourself a beautiful home. Welcome back to the program. Uh, today's topic is, what is the Bible definition of sin? So if you tuned in late, that's our subject today. Our purpose today is to answer that question. What is the Bible definition of sin? And we explain that at the outset, that sin is the transgression of the law. We find that in 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. So sin is the transgression of the law. Whoever transgresses the law also sins. Now, but we're going... Not, yeah. Go ahead, if, Dave. Can I, can I just raise this kind of, um, let's call it a devil's advocate question, because sure. the question is, what is the law? Because the, the disciples or the apostles in Acts kind of had a different, uh, this, this one passage almost sounds like it's got a different set of laws that, that uh, Gentiles would have to follow, and it's in okay. Acts 15. Yeah, all right, let's look at Acts 15. All right, let's We do want it. to handle that. Acts chapter 15, and we're looking at verse 1. And certain men came down from Judea, taught the brethren, and said, Except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and the elders about this question. So the first ministerial conference was held at Jerusalem about circumcision. Mm -hmm. This is important. Uh, these men from Judea wanted them, wanted the Gentiles to be circumcised, to come in to become Jews first, and then become Christians. And Paul and Barnabas said, no, that's not necessary. So we'll go, we're going to drop down here to verse 19. 19. I'll let you read that. Wherefore my sentence is, am I on the right? Uh, that we trouble them not, which from among the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write unto them, that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. So it sounds like, like I heard you say, that the, that the things that are strangled, you hold them up and... and the blood stays in there, so now you're eating blood, and that was considered bad. Exactly. This, the question about circumcision is a physical thing. Right. It's physical. physical. Now, what he's talking about here is other physical things that Gentiles had to obey. They couldn't worship idols. They couldn't uh, eat blood. They couldn't eat things that were str uh, uh, animals that were strangled. Well, in a lot of cases, they were... Um, 
the idols, they were sacrificing these, these animals to the idol, and then they'd sell the meat that was left over. So essentially this meat had been sacrificed to an idol. So now well, it, it could be a problem for the that, that would be a problem, certainly. Right. There were various problems that arose up back in those days. Now James gives an answer to uh, to what the, how to handle the problem, but are are Gentiles? Here's the question that arises: Are Gentiles obligated to keep the Ten Commandments or not? Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 19, verse 16, He said plainly, "If you will enter into life." Keep the commandments. And if you think about Roman society, they already had laws, don't murder, don't steal, don't uh, Kill. commit adultery, yeah. lie under oath. So a lot of these rules yeah. were already in the civil law. And then these, these extra things they were adding were just add-ons to make sure that you didn't, didn't basically didn't honor God by what you were doing in terms of the relation that they had between their idols, worship, and this and okay. their conduct. Yeah, definitely. Now, verse 21 is a key verse. If we study that, we'll, we'll really understand what Paul's talking about. For Moses of old time has in every city them who preach him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. Now, why would Paul say that? Because why there, would he were, say that? there were no churches like there are today. People met in each other's homes. They met by the river. And they met in various places. But uh, Gentiles could go in on the Sabbath, could go in on the Sabbath and go into the synagogues and listen to the law being read. They could listen to it. So they would know what was they would what know. Moses was teaching. Yes, yeah. yes, right. definitely. Okay, we're going to go back now to, uh, to Matthew chapter 5. And let's, let's really understand what Jesus is talking about here when he talks about... Uh, when he talks about the purpose of his coming. Matthew chapter 5, and we're looking at verse 17. And here it says, think not. Dave, think not means the same as don't think. Don't right? think. <laughs> don't think. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say to anybody, don't think, but, but yeah. think not that I am come to destroy the law. Okay, that, that's a good point. Or the prophets, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. No. Now, some ministers stop right there. They hold that verse up in the air, and they say, well, see, Jesus Christ came. He fulfilled the law for us. Therefore, we do not have to keep the law. Okay, that's what they say. Well, but they but never read the next few here. verses. They never read them. Let's you and I read those few verses. He says here, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass. Well, there's still heaven out there, there's still earth. They didn't pass yet. One jot, that's one tiny accent mark, or one tittle, that's a small letter of the Bible. It looks like a comma. It's called a yud, Y-O-D. And it's a small letter, looks like a comma, which shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. So the law is in effect now. Whosoever, uh, whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Go ahead. Well, you had a question? Well, you were going to read through 20, I believe. Yeah, so. I'm going to read through 20. Yeah. The 20 
verse 20 is the key of understanding what Jesus was talking about. And here he says in verse 20, For I say unto you, that's you and me, that uh, I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God, which are synonymous. Well, Dave, we're coming to the end of the program now. Um, I'd like to... Uh, a lot of topics we have. A lot of, about we've yet. got a lot of ground to cover. We're coming back next week. Folks, we'll be back next week to finish the program on part two. Part two is what does the Bible say about sin? What is the Bible definition of sin? Now, until then, why don't you send away for these two very important booklets, Why Do You Observe Sunday When the Bible Teaches the Observance of the Sabbath? And which day did Jesus Christ and his apostles keep? And when, when was the day changed from the seventh day to the first day. It's a very interesting booklet. It will take you about 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes tops to read it along with your Bible. Whenever you're reading these booklets, always read them along with your Bible to make sure that they're biblically correct. Now, the second booklet is What Do You Mean Salvation? And here at the bottom of the booklet, it says, Do you realize not one in a hundred knows what it is, how to get it, when you receive it. Don't be too sure you do. Here, once and for all, is the truth made so plain you will really understand it. Well, we have an interactive Bible study every Saturday. Uh, at 1 o'clock, why don't you come join us? Until then, this is Meyer Stahl and Dave Tofstead saying goodbye all. You have been listening to What is Truth with Pastor Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God located in Las Cruces, New Mexico. For copies of today's lesson or for more information, call area code 575-650-7359. That's 575-650-7359. Join us next week at this same time for another edition of What is Truth? Until next week, we wish you God's richest blessings.